Hi, I'm Lisa of Simply Bowen Therapy. About a week ago, I helped out at the local Police and Citizens Youth Club. They had their annual three-on-three -three basketball competition. Um, players and spectators were able to receive free Bowen treatments. Um, it was an absolutely fantastic day. So many talented kids playing really well, lots of high energy and a really fun day. And they were all smiling, whether they were winning their games or eh, not scoring as many points as the opposition. Now, I have put together some details about what I observed at the basketball last weekend. Unfortunately, there's no basketball courts near my house, um, so I've just come down the road into Sydney Park, a massive park at the end of my street, to um, talk a little bit about basketballs, scoring hoops, and those tight hips that basketballers have. Honestly, it's been ages since I played basketball. I think it must have been back in high school. It was so long ago. Um, but as I was getting prepared to head to the basketball competition last weekend, um, I started to think about the kinds of injuries that I might be seeing um, while I was there. I did a quick search online and they were saying that some of the injuries that were quite commonly seen in basketball were caused by falls, player contact, changing directions quickly, landing awkwardly, getting hit by the ball. Um, lower body injuries were pretty common. Um, I do remember there was a few twisted ankles last year, so sprained ankles being the most common, but knees also um, tending to account for quite a few as well. And it was also saying that other common injuries were to the hand, the fingers, the face being hit by the ball. My reality was, last weekend, I was expecting those kind of injuries, but they weren't what the players were coming to see me for. It was for none of those. So what players were coming to see me for on the day was muscle tightness and restrictions that were stopping them from being able to move as freely as they'd like. Um, player after player who came to me was speaking about tight hips. Their lower back was aching, their hamstrings were tight, it was hard to stand up straight, and many admitted that they didn't really stretch very much either. But when I remembered the days from when I was playing, and in some of the breaks I managed to watch a few of the games that were being played, and then with understanding what's going on in the body now as I do, some of those muscle imbalances that the players were coming to me with actually became so much clearer as to what was going on. A couple of things I noted as I watched the few games was the players' body positions and how I often saw them running. On the court, while players clearly run and jump a lot through the game, so much of their time is spent in a squat-like position. Their knees are bent, their hips are bent, they're often leaning forward a little. And it's whether they're dribbling the ball, they're, they're moving about to get in a position to take the ball, or even when they're defending and blocking another player, so much of their time is spent in that squat-like position. Also, after a basket is scored, the players need to get to the other end of the court, of course. Sometimes they have the opportunity to be able to run forward as they normally would, but so often you see them running backwards so as to not take their eye off the ball or the person that they're defending. And noticing some of those body positions and those actions meant that those players' tight hips and hamstrings really did make a whole lot of sense. Now, most players that I spoke with complained of tight hip flexors, whether it was the hip flexors themselves or symptoms that were somewhere else that were caused by the hip flexors. And it, it's not a surprise, really. Deep in the hip, those muscles join the lumbar spine to the top of the thigh bone. It's one of those key muscles that contract and get shorter when you want your hip to flex, when you want your thigh and your tummy to get closer together. They're the muscles that lift your upper leg when you're walking up some stairs, and they're also critical muscles to keep your pelvis and trunk stable when you're moving. Now, when you do a regular squat, just moving up and down, then the hip flexors really don't come into play that much. It's the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quadriceps that are doing the bulk of the work. But when a player is holding that squat position, and moving about, those hip flexor muscles become key. They're the ones that need to engage to keep the pelvis 
stable as the body twists and turns and as the players move around the court. So a bit like sitting, when hip flexors find themselves in that contracted or the short position for a long time, they often have trouble letting go again. Some people will feel that tightness in the front of their hips, but because those muscles are connected to the lumbar spine, many of them feel like their lumbar spine is tight or achy, especially as they're trying to stand up and those hip flexor muscles don't really want to let go. Now when basketballers are holding a squat, it's not just the hip that's in flexion, the knee is also in flexion, it's bent. Now the muscles that hold uh, the knee in that stable bent position, a key one is the hamstrings. They join the bottom of the pelvis to the back of the shin bone, the top of the shin bone. So when those hamstring muscles contract and shorten, they bring the bottom part of the leg closer to the pelvis. So if you are standing, then this would have the knee bend and the foot move backwards. But in the case of our basketballers who have their feet planted on the floor, the knee will bend and the bottom will move towards the floor. You know, of, of course quadriceps and glutes are always going to help to maintain balance and flexing the other joints so that you don't fall over, but the hamstrings are, are really working quite hard. And like those hip flexors, when hamstrings find themselves in a contracted short state for an extended time, they have trouble letting go. Some people will feel the tightness in the hamstrings, others might realise they suddenly have trouble touching their toes. I've been told a while back that sports players who run backwards a lot, such as a lot of soccer players and, and basketball players, often experience problems with their hip flexors. It's an interesting observation and one that I, I took for granted, but I, it was something I thought I'd look into a bit more since especially since watching those basketball games. Now, walking or running in a forward motion relies on a specific sequence of muscles contracting and relaxing to move. When walking or running forwards, the hip flexors need to be able to release when you're extending or you're straightening that leg backwards before you're pushing off. And when the stride is longer, that hip in the back leg needs to open up even more. So running backwards, the muscles are activated differently. As the leg is lifting to move backwards, the glutes are contracting and the hamstrings play a major part in extending that leg backwards. The hip flexors need to be able to relax to allow a longer stride backwards. And that's something you don't often see with the basketball players, where their usual, you know, the backward is a very short stride and it's almost a shuffle-like movement backwards for some. And unless efforts are made to make big strides backwards, the hip flexors never really fully extend and they're maintaining a level of contraction. So how can Bowen therapy help our basketballers? Well, what is Bowen therapy? It's a very gentle form of body work. Small, gentle, precise moves are done over muscles, tendons, ligaments, triggering the body to begin its own healing process. Bowen influences the body through the connective tissue, known as the fascia. And fascia plays a major role in muscle coordination, postural alignment, and the overall structural and functional integrity of the body. The treatment initiates a number of changes on the table which continue in the body for up to a week that's following. And following a Bowen session, improved mobility and posture is commonly seen. Definitely off the table, and even more so in the days that follow. So how can Bowen therapy help basketballers? Well, for the basketballers I treated last weekend, gentle work to relax the lower body and balance the hips gave players freedom to move, even in those super fast treatments done in just minutes before the game, they were able to see a difference. Depending on the time available for some, some were able to actually receive specific areas to target the hamstrings or muscle areas, where those were the areas that were giving them more grief. Most of the players I treated were still quite young, so restrictions in the fascia were not necessarily showing up in other parts of the body just yet. If these players continue with some kind of help, whether it is stretching or massage or bone therapy, then further tightness in the fascia up or down the body might be able to be prevented. 
they would feel less tightness or less restriction perhaps up in their shoulders or less issues down in their knees as the, the restrictions around their hips are addressed. And because Bowen triggers the body to change over a few days, a session in a few days before a big competition rather than in the minutes before would have the body feeling its best. And treatment soon after competition would help the body recover further. There were so many smiles that were getting off the table. They were feeling different even after a rush treatment. I had one player bring his teammates over to say, you need some treatment before we go on. So it confirmed that even that short treatment for Bowen was really helping the players feel their best. And like last year, a number of those players I treated for Bowen went on to win the finals. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about basketball and how Bowen therapy can help. And I look forward to sharing more with you in the future.